together so you can get a really good understanding of what I'm looking for when you do some of these deep dives on your own. So you're gonna have Google Docs, um, just a plain document open. You'll have Google Sheets, just a plain Sheets open. Um, you, you can use your Zone Mail account to get to this or whatever Google account you have. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at real data. So I have the calories in beer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all. So select all, whatever shortcut you use for that, select all. And then we're gonna copy and paste that over to Sheets. And then we'll make all the graphs in Sheets. So let's see what we're gonna do in this deep dive. So we're gonna create a histogram. So in Google Sheets, we're gonna select the calories column because that's the data that we're interested in. So real data sets, we tend to have more than we always need. Um, so we'll select the calories column and then we'll go to insert and chart and then we'll find histogram. So to select calories, I only select that column. I'll go to insert, chart, and then this is not a histogram. This is a different graph, which is not what we're looking for. So here's histogram. If it doesn't show up under suggested, histogram is farther down under other. It says histogram. Um, bar graph is interpreted a little differently in Sheets and Excel, so we want to make sure we choose histogram, not bar or combo or column, so histogram. And then um, you can edit your title, so if you don't have a title, you can add it here. Um, under customize, um, you can customize it a little. Um, you could change the title if you don't have anything. You could change the colors if you want, but otherwise we'll copy and paste this. So I'm gonna copy and paste this to my report. Um, we don't need to link it. And you can shrink it a little. And so that's the first part of the report. So let's see what we're gonna do next. Now we're gonna analyze the graph. The scaling is a little strange in Google Sheets. Um, why is this bad and what would be a better scale? So the scaling is this. I'm going from 50 to 73.08 to 96.15, that is a very strange scale. So I'm gonna number the problems just to line up. Um, so why is it weird? 50 to 73.08, right? Um, you could use your calculator to figure out what that's counting by, but why is this bad? And that's, you can type out a response in your deep dive. So this is practice, um, so you can see the format, but I want you to actually answer this question. So why is this bad? This is a really weird scale to me. Like if you were making this on paper, you would never count by these numbers. So for question three, we're gonna go ahead and change the graph. So let me show you how to make it better. So under edit chart and customize, um, we'll follow this step. So edit chart is this, if you don't have it open, it's right here. So you click the three dots and edit chart pops up. But a lot of us probably already have it open. So we go to customize and then under histogram, we see bucket size is auto. Um, so if I change bucket size, um, it'll change what it counts by. So that was a really bad choice. Um, and then we can kind of edit the bucket size. So I'm kind of guessing right now because we're all brand new to this. So try a couple numbers, see what you think good, looks good. I don't think 100 looks good. Um, how about 20? I think 20 looks okay. Um, 25, so I'm going 50, 75, 100. So it's changing that scale on the bottom. So 25 looks nice. I think counting by 20s also looks okay. 50, 70, 90 looks okay. Um, 50, I think, maybe is a little too big. Um, I think we could see a better graph. So I'm going to go back to 25s, but I'll let you mess with it. 30s might look good. I kind of like 25 because we start with 50, so that feels really natural. 50, 75, 100. So bucket size is just what we count by. And then we'll copy and paste this new graph to our report. And it looks pretty similar to our previous graph. It's just scaled a little better. The bottom, oops, I copied the wrong graph. Um, let's make sure I copy the correct graph. Copy chart. I must have, yeah, I'm going to paste again. And you'll see the graphs look pretty similar, but it's a little more intuitive to have a scale of 25. It spreads out the data a little bit better. 
And then the rest of the report, we're just going to answer some questions. So let's see. Number four is based on the graph, what distribution shape do you think this is? So distribution are the shapes um, from 2.4 notes. Um, so I'm going to, I'll let you answer this. So go back and see if you, a shape stands out to you. Um, I noticed, things I noticed is this little peak. I noticed the side is a little bit longer. So think about that when you look at distribution shapes. And even in this weird version of it, I can still kind of see that shape, but I think it looks a little bit better with the scale of 25. Um, five, I'm gonna have you do um, an average, and then we're gonna answer in question six if it's a sample or a population. So for average, we're gonna choose that column again. Um, if you've done formulas in Excel, you can do that, but I'm gonna show you the other option for those of us who have no experience. So I'm gonna select calories, and I'm gonna go to data and column stats. So I'm gonna just get rid of the graph. I've already copied it, so it can go away. I don't need it. So again, make sure you select the correct column. We're interested in calories, nothing else. And we'll go to data and column stats. And then we have a lot of information. And if we scroll all the way down, we can find the average. 155.46 or 47 it would round up to. So again, again, we just go to data, column stats, and then we'll look at some of this other stuff later. Um, if you've ever done formulas, if you're interested, you do equals. Um, equals is how you tell sheets to do equations, and then you just type the word average, and then you just tell, you select the column that you want the average of in parentheses, and it'll calculate the average. And we get the same number. So equal sign creates formulas, average is the formula for average, and then inside the parentheses you tell it what column you're interested in. So just another option if you're interested in Excel formulas. Either way we get the same answer. And then for question six I just said is this a sample or a population? And again I'll let you answer this. Um, is this a sample because it's just some beers or is it a population because it's every beer ever? So those are the things to think about. Um, there are a lot of beers in this data set, um, but is it realistic that I have every single beer ever? Um, something to think about. So that's my data set. So this is what deep dives will look at. We'll make graphs on, on the computer so we can make graphs with like bigger data sets. And then we'll probably do a little bit deeper analysis in the other ones, but this should at least get us started. So this is what your report will look like. Make sure you put a maybe um, deep dive uh, practice, put your name on it. And then you could submit either directly from Google Docs if you know how to do that, or you can just download as a PDF and then you can upload that PDF for your submission. So this is what I'm looking for for the deep dives. We'll put them in a PDF and upload that from our report. So the next couple ones, I will only give you a guide and not a video, um, but hopefully this will help us understand what I'm looking for.